Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. This is um unusual that I'm doing a, a live episode here on a Wednesday afternoon, but um figured I would go ahead and get this one in and uh, see what type of love we get for that. And I got a very special guest joining me today. It's going to be uh, Mel from the Man Down Sports Podcast. So definitely looking forward to getting into some hoops talk with him. But before we do that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't wait all right so as i said um man down mel so with no further ado, let's get it. And we're going to talk about um, Caitlin Clark and is she the GOAT of women's college basketball? And so we're getting a whole lot of um, different different thoughts on that coming up. Uh, people saying that um, the other female players, other WNBA players, other former college women's players, they're jealous and this, that, and the third. And Caitlin Clark has been amazing she has rewritten the record books um, to some extent. I guess depends on how you look at it, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and we can we can talk about that a little bit. But um, I guess we saw her do amazing things. And for me, one of the most amazing things is the fact that um, last year in the national championship game, they set a uh, women's college basketball uh, record for views. And then this year, the rematch against LSU in the Elite Eight they set another with 12 million views. And then, uh, what was it? Um, the following uh, weekend in the Final Four, they set another record with 14 million. And then uh, after that, in the national championship game where Iowa and Caitlin Clark lost to undefeated South Carolina, another record, 18 million plus views, which was the highest viewed basketball game, men or women of any level in the last five years. That's crazy. That's crazy. And um, Caitlin Clark is obviously a big part of that. The way she plays, uh, a lot of people say that she's reminiscent of a, a female Steph Curry and everything that she's done has led to the question now, is she the GOAT of women's college basketball? And for me, I think that's a pretty simple answer. That's a resounding no, as great as she is and as much excitement and life that she's breathed into the women's college game, to me, is very, very simple. And the, And the question is this, in what sport can we call someone the GOAT without having won a championship? Like, it just doesn't happen. Because it doesn't. I, think, I think that's a big part of being the GOAT is winning. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, that's that's what you do. <laughs> it, it, it's all about, uh, you know, it's all about actually, why are you out there competing, right? You're out there, like Herm said, to win the game. That's, that's what it's about. And so... Um, you, you can't be the GOAT if you didn't get a chip. That doesn't mean you're not an all-time great player, but you can't be the greatest of all time without that. Imagine somebody trying to say they're better than Michael Jordan. They never won anything. Not anything, but they never won a championship. It just doesn't make sense. Oh, there you go. I just got the Drew Holiday news. Four years, 135. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Which is crazy because they just gave uh, Brown that crazy money last summer. Mm -hmm. And they still, they still had to sign Tatum. Yeah. Hey, but anyway, um, <laughs> Caitlin Clark, uh, what are your thoughts on on the the women's uh college basketball goat argument? I think it's I got a, I got a lot of thoughts on that. This this yeah. is the first thought, and okay. I and I apologize because I gotta I gotta kind of break this down. So this is the first oh. thought. First and foremost, mm -hmm. do you remember ever having a conversation or debating the college goat ever? No. Not men or women. No one has ever debated the college GOAT, mm -hmm. especially not for men where the best players leave after one year or two years, right? Not The best players don't stay for four years. The, the, the four-year players are the Shane Battiers and the J.J. Reddicks. You rarely get the Tim Duncan that stayed for four years. So the best players are leaving. So as far as, all right, let's look at how much they won. Well, if I only stayed 
for one or two years and you stayed for four and you won one and yeah. I won one or you won two. Like, how are we measuring that? Mm -hmm. Like right now, if you go and 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 look at the top scores in the ACC, guess what number Jordan is? He's what? close to he's close to he's past 50. OK. All right. The number one score in the ACC history is Tyler Hansborough. Number two is J.J. Reddick. Why? Uh, yep, that's right. Because they both played four years. Michael Wait. Jordan is at number 50 or below that. He might be closer to 80. He's nowhere near. He's nowhere near it. Mm hmm. Right. So and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think he also didn't have threes early on in his college career. They didn't right? have threes. No, they didn't have threes until no. until he got to the NBA. I mm -hmm. think it came 81, 82 or whatever. So. um, So, yeah, so he, just just even trying to find out a goat and use the same metrics that we use in the NBA, we're going to be using team uh, your team success, how many times you won, how great you were as a player. And we're going to measure your greatness probably based off your stats and all that stuff. And the great ones just don't stay alone. They, they don't stay on the team long enough to even compile those stats, right? So that's that's already out of the, uh, for me, it's already a watch. There's no such thing as a college GOAT, men or women, right? Now, if you want to entertain the conversation, yeah, women, uh, what's up, Zoe? Women, they can't leave as freshmen or sophomores. So they got to at least stick around for three years. So that's even more of a, a, a better conversation. So let's talk about what we measure GOAT with in NBA uh, history, right? For me, the first thing I got to look at is how good you are as a player. I'm not going to have someone in the GOAT debate with, uh, in, in my mind if the current GOAT is a better player than you because the current GOAT is a better player than most players I've seen or all players I've seen. He's accomplished uh, more than anybody else except Bill Russell and Kareem, right, as far as winning, mm -hmm. right? And he has the stats to back up, back up and support if I say he's a better player than someone, right? I, I mean, if you can't tell that by looking at it, then I can at least go right. to the stats, right? right? So he has all the legs you need, both ends of the floor. Great player offensively, defensively, uh, team success, winning, uh, and then the stats are back it up as well. And then we look at Caitlin. Oh, and then the impact on basketball and changing the game is all there. Mm -hmm. right? When you look at Caitlin, she don't have the winning. She's not the best basketball player I ever seen. Right. She don't it right. You know, she's not elite on both ends, in my opinion. Uh, and she do have a crazy great impact like a goat would, mm -hmm. but that's where it stops. Your impact, you impacted the game so much because you put up great points and you you did some things that other players wasn't capable of doing, and sometimes they were capable of doing it, but wasn't allowed to do it. I, I it was a conversation with Diana Tarasi and and Sue Bird. And, I heard um, that. That's right. Bird, when they said, hey, do you think Gino would ever let That's right. us pull up from 30, uh, a 30 foot three pointer? And she said, right. absolutely Hell not. Gino no. would not allow that. Right. You get what I'm So right. you get on a team that's actually running offense, a team that got other All Americans, where we're not going to let you come down and be a one, one woman show, and mm -hmm. everyone is just there to uh, set screens for you and catch and shoot threes. That's not what it's all about. So that's how you get those numbers. So the numbers are, uh, 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 are kind of inflated. Mm -hmm. and the impact is great you got that but that's only one thing you got you got numbers and you got impact mm -hmm. no winning and you're not the best player i've ever seen so right i mean it is it, it's, it's gonna be hard if i did try to have that conversation which i i really wouldn't seriously have it but if i if i did entertain it no it it, it, it it'll be with somebody that's a better player in my opinion yeah and and so of the of the players currently playing in the women's college game i think there's a couple who got a legitimate shot, you know, if they play all four years and at, at doing this thing. And obviously, um, Juju Watkins from USC is just an absolute problem. She's so smooth. I think the only thing with her is just a little better understanding of the coll collegiate level game and better shot selection. Cause I think she's at like 40% and she had some really bad shooting nights. I think in the PAC 12 championship, she was like nine for 25 or nine for 30 or something like that. But once she gets a hold of that, and that'll also come with, you know, more recruiting, bringing in players that will assist in taking a little bit of the defensive attention away. But she I think she's a monster. Um, Hannah Hidalgo from Notre Dame is is another animal. I think she was third in the country in scoring as a true freshman. So we are really seeing some some young ladies that can go, man. And yeah, but then even still in that GOAT discussion, we got to look backwards as as we generally do in sports with a GOAT discussion. Right. But. And a, a bunch of them seem to be from UConn and Tennessee, right? But you have your Brianna Stewart's, I think, uh, four-time champion, three-time player of the year, if I'm not mistaken. 
That's four crazy. time, four time most outstanding player in the tournament, like Final Four MOP. Crazy. Um, Maya Moore, I think two time champion, two time Wade Award winner. Um, obviously Cheryl Miller, the first truly big name uh women's player. Obviously, I, I don't want to just relegate her to Reggie Miller's sister, but for those that don't really know the women's game as well, and I'm not claiming to be an authority on the women's game, but um Reggie Miller's older sister, Cheryl, she was quick story about Cheryl Miller. So Reggie, he he likes to tell the story. He his first big game in high school, Cheryl and his dad um come to pick him up. He gets in the car, he's feeling himself, and they're like, "Hey, Reg, how'd your game go?" He's, like, "I'm feeling good, you know. Uh, uh, how'd you do? I got 40. Oh, that's great, Reg. That's great." So he said, "Well, how how'd you do?" And he's like, uh, "Cheryl and her dad, they're just looking at each other. What? 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 What'd you get? 60? They're just looking at each other. Uh." 105. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> right. So Cheryl, you know, she was out there like Wilt, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. You know, insane, unheard of numbers. Now, in the defense of Caitlin Clark and, and all the others who may be in the women's goal conversation, I think Cheryl Miller won like three championships in college. Also, she had a heck of a team. She had um Cynthia Cooper on that team. Um, JaVel McGee, his mother, Pam McGee, and his aunt. Um, well, I can't remember the aunt's name, but they're, they're twin sisters, I believe. So you had the McGee's, you had um, uh, Cheryl Miller, and you had Cynthia Cooper. So I can't, I can't even imagine what they was doing to the teams they ran up against, you know? Yeah. And so there, there have been a lot of incredible women's players. It's just they haven't been getting the attention, obviously, because they didn't play the way Caitlin plays. Some of them played before the three-point line. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the media attention wasn't there the same way. Um, even – Coming forward a little bit, you got Shamika Holtzclaw at Tennessee. I think she won two or three championships and was an absolute beast of a player. I think she was rookie of the year in the WNBA, won a championship there. So, um, you know, there's there's a she lot. was a problem. She was a problem. Problem. She was a problem. problem. Oh yeah, I, re I remember her. I remember seeing her play. I've, I've never, I've, I've never watched the women's game and seen someone separate themselves from everybody on the court so much, like Cynthia Cooper in the WNBA. And like uh, Shamika Holesclaw did in college, they separated themselves. Now, Maya Moore it might might be a better player than Shamika. Uh, yeah. Stewart might be a better player, but when I was watching them play, I didn't see that separate. Like Shamika was like, she don't. I was looking at, I was like, man, she don't belong. Like she's better <laughs> than everybody. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it it, it was a little bit more even when uh, you know, and that might have been because how Gino coach, you know, she didn't, you know, wasn't unleashed like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, could, it could have been that, but yeah, uh, man, you you naming some names, man. Uh, Maya Moore, Shamika Hoseclaw, Cheryl Miller, Cynthia yeah. Cooper. Yeah, them yeah. some names right there. Well, I'll tell you, Cynthia Cooper, as much as she was a beast, even in the WNBA, uh, remember she was playing with Cheryl Swoops, so that helps a whole. Oh, and Cheryl <laughs> Swoops too. Yeah, that helps. And a whole they had part. Tina Thompson, man. Tina Thompson won those right. side people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was unfair. How did they even get that team together, man? That was unfair. That's a great question. They won four straight chips to start off uh, the WNBA's existence. Man. Um, yeah, I, and I, the I, WNBA I, was really actually. It felt like the WNBA was really good. Then after after the Rockets uh, went away and Cynthia Cooper mm -hmm. retired, it, that's that's when it took that dip. But you know what else happened around that same time? Mm -hmm. The WNBA games was on NBC, just like the NBA was. That's right. And for some reason, I don't know what the NBA thought, but they thought it was a good idea to put the WNBA on the Lifetime channel because that was the women's channel. Ah, uh, so okay. they had a contract with Lifetime, and I was like, I don't go to Life. I, like I don't like I. That's when I first started because I was watching the WNBA every time it came on. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and they did a good job of marketing. They had Rebe Rebecca Lobo and uh, Lisa Leslie was like, oh man, one in New York, right. one in L.A. And yeah, you yeah. know they 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 did that pretty good, and they, and they marketed it really good. Now when we was ready for it, and we was watching it, mm -hmm. and when they when it left NBC for Lifetime, I, I lost track of it. I couldn't find out when when the games was on, and it was just it was a disaster after that. Right. So quick story. Um. Uh. When I lived in New York, and I, I used to work at the Big Foot Action Store, and uh. 34th and 8th Avenue, which was a block over from Madison Square Garden. And um, so I was there and Teresa Weatherspoon was playing for the Liberty at the time. So she comes in and I was helping her out. And she's like, hey, you know, watch basketball. Yeah. Watch women's basketball. I'm cool with it. Says, OK, I'll, I'll leave you two tickets in the in the box at at the garden for the game. So, OK, cool. The Rockets were in town. So 
Um, me and my wife went at the time we weren't married yet, my girl. But so we we went over, we watched the game, and somewhere around here, I actually got a picture with um me, my wife, and um Cheryl Swoops. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that we got to go down there and and take a picture with her after the game. So that was that was pretty cool. That was my little <laughs> WNBA memory from early on. So yeah, but um, man, so back to uh Caitlin Clark. I don't think it's throwing any shade at Caitlin Clark to say that she's not the goat but she has done tremendous things for the women's game. Correct. And um, realistically, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you that I don't watch a ton of NBA, uh, WNBA, almost none, but I will be tuning in the first game she plays against Diana Taurasi. And what, the- if, and, and what if, well, f- well, first of all, Diana, Diana Taurasi is 41. And she and she missed and she missed most of the season last year for a toe injury. So the, I, I don't expect Diana Taurasi to be giving her no hell. Well, I'm you just looking I mean? at it based on the commentary that she made, you know. And oh, I yeah, yeah, that, that that'd be fun. But but yeah. are you are are you are you prepared to not see her actually strive this season? Yes, because I think based on a lot of the attention she has gotten, I think they're gonna go hard at her when she when she gets into the league. And not even that though. How long did it take Steph to become Steph when he was with Golden State? Right, and that that was the other thing I was gonna go towards we're not sure is Indiana going to allow her to just do whatever she wants to do. Like Lisa Bluter allowed her to do whatever she wants to do. She's probably going to have to play. This is professional ball now within a little more structure, not saying that Iowa played with no structure, but you know, it was the Caitlin Clark show. And so we're going to see what she's allowed to do. And, And what I will say because of the threat of the elite shooter that she is, she's a willing and outstanding passer. Great and I think passer. that's going to be really really beneficial at the next level and it's not just you know I, I mentioned this before on an earlier segment it's not just drive and kick you know it's actually you know you get the interior passing like she's got court vision on the fast break she's always getting the ball up the floor like that's something i notice a lot really good with the outlet passes so it, it's not just you know driving kick which is like the lazy thing that everybody does in, in in basketball now but she is a legitimately good passer and i like that and i think that that should translate well to the next level because how do you endear yourself to your teammates? Even if you can score and you can shoot it, get them the ball because they're going to be more willing to get it back to you and allow you to do your thing. And, and you know, Aaliyah Boston plays for the Indiana Fever, correct? I didn't even realize that. That's yeah, she, she, she was that she was that top pick last season, okay. and now they now they get uh Caitlin and That's Aaliyah good. Boston is a post player. She's not gonna That's be good. she's not gonna be just setting screens for her right. and standing at the three point line. So yeah, so that's why. So if Indy if Indiana want to market Caitlin Clark and the mm-hmm. WNBA want to market Caitlin Clark and they want her to come out here and average twenty two points, uh twenty five points a game or whatnot, uh mm-hmm. what they're gonna have to do. <laughs> Is go find a coach that want to coach her the way they did at Iowa, and if I was them, I would fire the Indiana coach now and 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 and, 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 sit, and sit and and hire Bluda. Yeah, if if, <laughs> if her contract's up, hey, come on in. If well, I give I give them a chance this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If it doesn't if it doesn't work out like I wanted to, I would bring Bluda in uh uh when her contract is up to coach the the Fever and coach Caitlin. I never considered that. I think one of the bigger things to the WNBA, and I'm sure they're smarter than people than me in that league office, it needs to do in order to push this thing is to try to market the Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark rivalry and make it some sort of along the lines of, you know, uh, Magic and Bird in terms of trying to utilize that to revitalize the league. I think it would be smart, but not responsible as adults i mean we do not need it i'm seriously man I, i'm so tired i'm so glad that, perspective. Bro, i'm so glad uh uh college uh, basketball is over uh right now because <laughs> i social media was toxic with white black mm-hmm. reese mm-hmm. versus caitlin i mean it, it was just toxic man i i, I don't have the bandwidth mentally to, to, to deal with that for a whole no nah, I, I ain't no way ain't no way man you know what? That's a great point know. because if there was if there was social media in the Magic and Bird era, that could have been real ugly. I never oh thought God. about that. All, all we had was newspapers back then. Right, right. We look at it as that was a beautiful era of basketball that helped bring the NBA and make it what we what we fell in love with. But when you when you mentioned that, I hadn't even considered like, oh my gosh, that could have been really really terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not cool. <laughs> it's not cool. But yeah, you're right. It'd be smart. 
mm-hmm. for them to play to play on it a little bit because they got butts in seats. But uh, I mean, it, it, in order for it to work, Caitlin has to be winning uh, right. in order to pique that interest. Because because if 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 uh, people that support Caitlin can't come and champion her and see her taking down uh, some of the greats in the league. Oh man, she took down Diana and Diana Taurasi uh, had all this to say about her. Oh, she took down Stewart and all these UConn girls. And then yeah. the black white thing, uh, she took down uh, uh, Reese and whoever, whoever the, the black stars are, she's taking them right. down. If they can't feel pride about her beating all of them, mm-hmm. it's not going to have the same sting. If she's a rookie and she's still getting her numbers mm-hmm. and she's playing and hitting 30 foot threes like she did in college, but they're losing, which is right. more than likely going to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. This is a, this is a team that got the number one pick. So they're not that good. Right. Right. So if she's losing. They're not going to be able to poke you in the eye on social media and say, look, uh, look at that girl. Look at that girl taking y'all down. They're not going to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a rude awakening. Well, well, I will say uh, this is probably the first time maybe ever that I'm going to preseason look at the WNBA schedule because there are some matchups I want to see. I want to see her play against INSQ uh, with, with the New York Liberty. I want to see her play against Kelsey Plum with the Aces, you know, Asia Wilson. I want to I want to see some of these matchups. I want to see what she can do and how it, how it can go. So, um, definitely looking forward to some of those. And also, I think the the last thing I'll have on this, um, if they're smart, um, NBA All Star Weekend, just like they did Sabrina and Steph, you do uh, obviously if she's playing well at that point, you do Sabrina and Caitlin, Steph and Clay, or you know Steph and Dame, or whoever it is you want to use as as your three point, and you do that competition again. Because I'm not a big, I mean, we know how bad the NBA All-Star Weekend was this past year, but the best event for me was watching Steph and Sabrina Ionescu in a three-point shootout. I didn't even watch it. It was good. No, yeah, I I, I, I bet it was. I didn't even watch Well, I didn't watch really anything for the All-Star, but I tried to watch the game just just. If, I tried to. It, too. it was. Oh. Yeah, I watched the game just for podcast purposes. But if, if it wasn't for the podcast, I would never watch uh, right. All Star Eat, but not at all. Right. But this was the last thing I say on this though, uh, Bruce. I think it's time if the NBA really want to do right by the WNBA, it's time for them to not have them offset season and have them parallel where uh, you know um, everything is 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 during the same time frame. You know, right. that, that way you can easily market it. I can come to TNT and, and, and see a WNBA game as like a, a um, not the main event, but what you call the people, the, uh, the front, not the front liners, but the, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. right. We can have a WNBA right before we had an NBA game. You get, you get what I'm saying? And yeah. I think, I, yeah, that, that'd, that'd be dope. That'd, I East think that'd Coast be real dope. An odd time frame though. And then you lose that West Coast demographic because, on the East Coast, you have most of the games start at 7, 7.30, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have the WNBA playing right before that, what's that game going to start at? 4.30 in the afternoon on the East Coast, 1.30 in the afternoon on the West Coast. Like, people got to work on the West Coast. You can, It's going to be tough in terms of viewership. Well, it, it, it gives them an opportunity to, to, to spread some of the NBA games out a little bit more. Instead of, instead of you having a back-to-back tonight, Mm-hmm. Like if if you're if you're uh, like uh, right now the Clippers and the Phoenix Suns playing again tonight they played last night right right instead of having that back to back this would be a night that you have a WNBA game with some other team and then Phoenix can play tomorrow uh, the other uh, Lakers you get you get to spread it out a little bit right you know so it, they can they can work it with the scheduling where where it won't be overlapping and you got to have one and then three more games just have one and then two more games a WNBA and two NBA games instead of WNBA and three NBA games. Mm-hmm. Well, they can work it. They can work it. If they if they really wanted to be smart, they I would do that. Mm-hmm. You know well, I, mean? I, I don't know why they wouldn't be in that. They have spent money year after year after year, and the WNBA is still in the red. So like I don't. I don't know. It's in the red because they, they, they that makes them bad businessmen. It ain't because the product's bad. It's it's because they're not marketing uh, properly. I still don't know what channel they play on. But if if you look at it, middle school. I think uh, it's ESPN. <laughs> middle school, the varsity boys and girls, they played the same the same day. Same thing in high school. Same thing in same college. Well, not not in college. They don't play the same day, but they got they no. they on the same season. Mm-hmm. And then you all of a sudden get professional and say, ah, right, let's do one doing a doing a win and the other one starting in summer. No, that's not cool. Yeah. Touche. 
All right. Well, um, I'm going to leave it there. I don't think um, I don't think we're going to uh, get into any calls on that. But uh, I think that was, that was a great discussion. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed talking about that. Before I let you get out of here, Mel, uh, let all the people know where to find you. Man Down Sports on YouTube. Uh, and you can also find us on uh, IG and uh, and X. Uh, man Down Sports for IG, I think is uh, Man Down P because it used to be Man Down Podcast. Man Down P on, on X and uh, Man Down Sports on TikTok. There you go. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for joining us, man. I, I really appreciate it. Always uh, love to have you on and uh, share your insight on on the game that we both love. Um, <laughs> wish the game, at least at the NBA level, could be better, but we'll see what happens going forward. All right, brother. All right. Yep. And I'm out. Peace.